Michael Samet from Samet Real Estate and in this video I'm going to talk to you about R codes, how to apply them to properties for subdivision and also show you the tools available to us to determine whether properties can be subdivided or not. I'm going to go through a few different examples of properties and show you the steps I take to work this out. The first thing we're going to look at is the R codes table and it's important to have a good understanding of this. To start with, we can see on the left hand side it gives us the R code. And as you go across, it gives more information in regards to minimum and average sizes, street frontage sizes, in regards to open space, and also setbacks for properties. But the main thing you want to look at for subdivision is your minimum and average sizes. If we go down to R25, we can use this as an example. The average size is 350 square metres. And for every multiple of 350 square metres you have, will determine how many properties you can get on that block. For example, if you have a property that is 700 square metres, 350 times by 2 is 700. If you are trying to see if the property has triplex potential, you have 350 times by 3, so you'd need 1,050 square metres to be able to subdivide. And anything in between that, so if you have a 900 square metre block, that's still going to be duplex potential, which is two. Then we have a minimum size. So with the minimum size, what this will tell us is how small the block can be. If you have a property which is 750 square meters, we can have two blocks, one at the back, one at the front, which are 300 square meters each as a minimum. And the additional space that you have can be used for a driveway or other common property. What I'd like to do now is go through some real life examples with you using the R codes table on properties in the area. So depending on where you're looking for a property, we can go to Google. Now each council in every suburb is going to have a mapping system and that's going to give you information about what the R code for that property is, the land size and different tools to work out subdivision. So the first property I'm going to look at is in Beachborough. So that is in the city of Swan. So what I always do is type in the council, city of Swan, and then maps. From here, it will give us links to their mapping system. So even if you click on the first link, you can visit Intramaps, and the Intramap system will come up. Down the bottom, we can do a search. So the property I'm going to search is one Gambia Court. The address comes up automatically and we can search the property. The information that it gives us here is if we click on planning on the side column, on the right it will give us the land size of the property. For this one it's 750 square meters and it gives us the R code for the property. For this one it's R20, R40. If we go back to our R codes table and we look at R40, we can see that the average size is 220 square meters. So to be able to subdivide the property, you need 440 square meters. The minimum size that the block can be is 180. So what we want to determine is do we have at least 180 square meters on the property that we can get another block for? So if we go back to the property, the different tools that are available to you, which I generally use, the first thing I will do is on the different layers here, down the bottom you can get a satellite image under Photo Mosaic. And the maps are fairly recent. The next step is to go to the tools at the top, click on here, and the two that I use is either the measuring tool, where you can measure the distance, or the area. So if we click on the area, we can see on this property it's on a corner block. We want to see if we can get a street frontage block on the side here. So determined to have, if we have enough room, we can use this tool, draw in whatever shape you like. Once you're finished, double click, and then it will give you an approximate area of how much room there is. So for this property, we can see that there's 258 square meters, which is much more than the 180 square meters that we require. So this is an easy example of how to determine how much room there is on this property. 
The next thing to look at is whether there's any sewage easements on the property. So this is something that's not shown on the title and it's not shown on any of the mapping systems that are publicly available. So what you need to do is either ask the agent who's selling the property to provide you a sewage plan or you can get an account with Dial Before You Dig. And on there you can order a map. So I've got one here that I've done. So this is the property at One Gambia Court that we were looking at. And these red lines are the sewage lines that run through the properties. We can see for this property that the main sewage line does not run through it. So we know that if we did create a block here, it's going to be clear and we can build on it wherever we need to. If we look at the next door property, we can see that within the property there is a sewage line running down. So you cannot build on this and you'll need to be a certain distance away from it. If we go back to the mapping system, that would look like a line running down here. So you wouldn't be able to build on any portion of this property that runs on that sewage line. The next thing I'd like to do is go on realestate.com, find a property and see if we can determine whether it has subdivision potential. So I've got realestate.com here already. We'll look in Beachborough. And the first property that comes up is one that we are selling. So we can see that it's 120 Blue Gum Road in Beachborough. It has a 610 square meter block. Now, straight away looking at the first picture, I can see that it looks like there's room coming down the side of the property. We've got an overhanging eave. So if we needed to, that would be quite easy to cut away. And then we've got a carport as well. Carports can also be taken away. They just need to be cut off and then a new car bay put out the front of the property. But we'll go on the intramaps and see what we can find. So first we'll go to Google, City of Swan Maps like we did before. And we'll search the address. Hundred and twenty Blue Gum Road in Beach Park search. So the first thing we will do is click on planning building and on the right hand side we'll double check the land area 610 square meters like it said on the ad and the R code is R20 slash R50. So straight away we'll go to our R codes table, look at R50 and we can see that the minimum size block that we can have is 160 square meters. So that's what we have to check for. The average is 180 square meters. So we know we need at least 360 square meters, which we do. So we'll go back to Intramaps. We will turn on the aerial imaging. Go to Tools and Measure. From here we can draw in the shape that we need. It doesn't have to be exact. Double click and we can see that it's given us 256 square meters. So we know we've got more than the minimum of 160 square meters, so that's fine. The next step is looking at how much room we have at the side of the property. So we can get the measuring tool and what we do is click on the map, pull it across to three meters, which is here. So it looks as though it is coming into the roof and that portion of the eave would need to be removed. And the best thing to do from here would be to go to the property yourself and measure how far three meters would be from the side of the fence and how much of the room would need to be taken away. If it's only a portion of the roof and you're not having to take away walls and things like that, then it's quite an easy process to do. But that would be the first thing that I'd be looking at. So if you are looking for a subdivision potential property and you want to know whether you can do it, these are the steps that I'd recommend for doing so. I hope you found the information helpful. 
It's also important to know that when you're looking at different R codes in different suburbs, each council is going to have a local planning strategy which is going to set different rules relating to what can and can't be done within that R code. So it's important to talk with the council, talk with your local agents and see what can be done with the property. If you'd like more information about your property or if you're looking at buying a property and you'd like to go through this as well, please give me a call anytime on 0422 493 192 and I'd be more than happy to help.